Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, back on the Holtas 1 on my Series S, so the Xbox platform. It's a video that people have been asking for, an updated video on my Holtas 1 settings. I'm going to show it on the Series S, you can adapt these for the PC, I've got Flight Sim running on my Series S. So I'm going to be showing you my 2023 edition settings for the whole Task 1. I've changed a few things up, and as you can see I've got the Elastic Band mod in place. For those of you who don't know this, I'll mention it now as it's likely to be a question. I've just looped a couple of elastic bands over the throttle quadrant there. Just because my throttle quadrant was a little bit loose, and that helps to give it a little bit of tension either side. Just loop a couple, or one big elastic band over, crisscross it across the throttle. And it helps with a bit of tension there, Just makes it, just gives it a bit more resistance. Okay, so I'm going to show you all my settings and all my sensitivities, and I've changed a couple of things up, so this should be interesting, hopefully, for a couple of you. Okay, let's not dilly-dally, let's get into this video. So I'm at Hoddesdon International, London City Airport, Cessna 172. The settings I'm going to show you are for GA aircraft, Cessna 172, 152, things like the Beaver and other aircraft like that. If you're flying other aircraft, you may want to play around with these settings, but they should give you some idea. So let's just go to my options and control options. And what I'm going to show you first are the primary flight controls. These should be self-explanatory and power management, which is the throttle. But primary flight controls, rudders on top there. I've got the twist action on the joystick as my rudder. If you're using the uh, rocker switch on the front of the throttle, this would be different for you. But I prefer the twist action on the rudder if I'm just using my Holtas 1 and no rudder pedals. And I've got the reverse axis ticked. You want that ticked if you want it to work properly. Elevator, up and down movement. As you notice, I've not got the reverse axis ticked on that. That's your up and down movement. You're climbing and descending. So pushing your joystick forward will make you descend. P pulling it back towards you will make it climb. So just be aware you don't want that axis ticked. And ailerons, left and right movement on the joystick. You do want that reverse axis ticked for it to work properly. So there you go, I'll just leave that there for you for a second. Just in case you're having difficulties. And throttle. Yeah, well it's a fr throttle lever here. You don't have the reverse axis ticked or you shouldn't if you want that to work properly. So there you go, pulling it back will decrease throttle. Pushing it forward will increase throttle. So there you go. Just leave that there for you for a second. And what we'll do, we'll go straight to sensitivities. Now remember, these work for me. I always say with, with sensitivities, adjust them to where it suits. Let's start with axis 2. I believe that's the rudder axis. So we'll work from left to right. So axis 2, remember this is for the twist action on the joystick. If you're using the rocker switch, you may have to amend these. But minus 35 in both the plus and minus sensitivities. The only other thing I've, I've altered here is the extremity dead zone. And I've put that to minus 10%. And that just works well for me on the ground and in the air. So minus 35 plus and minus, minus 10 extremity dead zone for the rudder. That's if I'm not using rudder pedals and I'm just using the whole task one, which a lot of you may be. Oh, elevator. 
So axis three, you're up and down, you're climbing and descending. I've really had to decrease these for it to feel right. So minus 70. If that's not reactive enough for you, if that's a bit dulled down, just increase these sensitivities. So instead of minus 70, you can put it on minus 60. I know that's contradictory sounding, but you're increasing, you're moving your right analog stick. I'm using the Xbox controller to the right. So put it on minus 60 if it doesn't suit. I'm going to put it back to minus 70 as that's where it suits me. On both the plus and minus sensitivities, a dead zone of 1%. So this is your elevator up and down movement. An extremity dead zone. I'm going to put that to 10%. And reactivity of 90%. So minus some plus sensitivities, minus 70%, dead zone of 1%, and extremity dead zone, minus 10%, rather. That suits, and reactivity of 90%. So there you go, you can give them a try, but if, it, if it's not reactive enough, just increase those sensitivities, plus and minus. Similar with Axis 4, your ailerons, left and right movement. For it to feel right to me, in general a aviation aircraft, minus 42 in both the minus and plus sensitivities. And a reactivity of 90%. So minus 42, minus and plus sensitivities, reactivity of 90%. Those Sensitivity settings feel right for me in the Cessna 172, 152 and the Beaver and aircraft like that. So you can give them a try. If it's not reactive enough, just increase. So that's increasing. You're increasing the value if it's not reactive enough for you. So I'll leave them on screen for you for a moment in case you want to try them. I'm done and I'll just apply and save them as I've just altered make sure it has saved yeah i've just altered that extremity dead zone i've been playing around with them so there you go so the, those are the primary flight controls and the throttle and my sensitivities let's move on with more settings so let's continue control options again Ensure that your hold task one is selected as always. Let's go to the camera settings here because I've got mine slightly different. So my hat switch, let's just show you a picture of the hat switch. I've got previous pilot position for hat switch down. Next pilot position for hat switch up. Quick view left and right. Now, if you want to look around your aircraft smoothly with your hat switch, I'll link a video down in the description to show you how to do that. I just prefer the quick views. I typically have a mouse uh, set up with my Xbox as well. So if I want to look around smoothly, I'll just use my right mouse button and use the mouse to look around smoothly. But I do prefer this setup. So previous, next, previous pilot position, hat switch down. Next, hat switch up, obviously a quick view right, hat switch right and quick view left, hat switch left. I've got the reset cockpit view to my F2 button, that's a big stripy button on the front or on the back of your flight stick. Just show you that. And external camera, this one I do have, and I believe this is set up by default anyway, but if not, I've got external view look up, external view look right, look left and look down. This lets me look around the aircraft smoothly and again F2 to reset my view when I'm in external mode. So I'll just show you them in, in operation, probably on all this, but with those external view settings just lets me look around smoothly. I can reset my view with F2. And in the cockpit. Look left, quick view, look right. Look, uh, sorry. Next pilot position is hat switch up. And previous will take me down to my instruments, which I'll show you in a moment. So look up will be next pilot position. If you keep pushing it up, it will take you to your right hand side. Down into my instruments, so it's previous pilot position is hat switch down rather. 
left and right quick views and that just works well. Okay, let's get back to my control options and camera settings. And I'll just leave that open for you in case you want to find these yourself and set it likewise. So it's cockpit camera and external camera. So there you go. And we'll carry on. Now, with the previous pilot position, when it takes me down into my instrument views, under the cockpit, under the camera menu, so there you go, you've got the camera menu, let's just close all these. You've got cockpit camera, external camera, you've got something called instrument views as well. Click into that. Oh, let's open the cockpit camera and external camera, that's okay. And I've got hat switched left and right again as previous instrument view, that's hat switched left, and next instrument view is hat switch right. And you're going to think, well, that's just going to take a quick view left and right, surely. Not so. If you're down into your instruments under instrument views, if you've got previous instrument view and next instrument view set up as left and right on your hat switch, it won't trigger quick view left and right. Let me just show you this in practice. So I'm in the, in the cockpit. Left and right, yes, quick view left and right, that's fine, as it should do. If I'm, if I'm in the instruments, left and right will now cycle me between all my instruments. Pretty much all your instruments that you have in your aircraft. I'm just going uh, next pilot, next instrument view there, by the way. Hat switch right. And if I want to go previous, so if I want to cycle between my G1000s, it's easy to do that once you're down in the instrument views. It's a bit complicated that, and it's difficult for people to get their mind around. But all you need to set up for that to happen is your cockpit camera. You will need to have... Uh, Actually, you you will need to have a button for previous pilot position to get down to your instruments. So even if you got your hat switch set up for smooth panning around the cockpit, have a button down, have a button set up for previous pilot position, and in instrument views, just put your hat switch left and right. It will cycle you be between the instruments as I just showed you. The only other thing here with uh, with my camera settings is my cockpit external view mod. I've got the previous button. I'll show you a picture of that to the right. Previous button set up so I can cycle between external and cockpit view. So there you go, chaps. Those are my camera settings. Let's continue with more settings. So continuing, just before we get onto the ne next section, there's a question that I've often been asked about views. When you hold your hat switch left or right, it just resets your view when you release it. For that not to happen, go into your options and go to general options. And in this menu, go to camera. This will be for PC and Xbox. And just put a lot of these to toggle. If it's on hold, so quick view function, put it to toggle. I put everything to toggle, in fact, smart camera, focus mode. But certainly the quick view function, if you're quick viewing left and right, and when you release your hat switch, it just resets to the center. Just put this to toggle instead of hold. And free look mode to to toggle as well, and head up, head up mode. Uh, to toggle as well. I've just put everything to toggle just to be safe, but that's the way I prefer things set anyway. So when you press the button, it will stay there until you press it again, your quick view left and right, for example, or your previous and next pilot position. Until you press it again, it will just stay... It, it will just stay in toggle mode, so it will just stay there until you activate it again. So there you go. Okay, so with that done, Let's just go to control options and we'll continue. I'm going to show you my flight control services. Let's go. I've showed you my primary flight. I'm going to show you my control trimming, how I trim my aircraft. Similar to what I had before, I'll show you to the right there, B1 and B2. So B2 to trim up and B1 to trim down in my case. B1's on the front of the flight stick. And B2 is at the back, but that just works well for me. So there you go. And secondary flight control services. Increase flaps and decrease. I've got it to B3 and B4. It's at the back of the throttle quadrant next to the rocker switch. 
So there you go, increase and decrease flaps. And I'll show you my brakes as well. So let's go to that. Toggle parking brakes, I've got set to the Y button. It's up to you where you put that, that's why I prefer it. And brakes themselves, when I come into land I want to brake. If I'm just using the whole task 1 and no rudder pedals, I've got it set to my trigger button. So there you go, and the other thing I'll show you here is the landing gear. Toggle landing gear, I've got it set to the next button. So there you go. I'll just leave that on screen. In fact, if I move the screen down like that, you can see all the settings I've just showed you. So trimming, flaps, brakes, and toggle landing gear, in case you want to give that a go yourself. Okay, let's continue. So let's continue. I'm coming towards the end of my current setup for my Haltas one. The only other thing I've not showed you is autopilot. I've got a couple of new settings here. Toggle autopilot master. Turn your autopilot computer on and off. I've got that set to X. Autopilot nav one hold. If you want to engage nav with a button press, it's this particular one. Take note, autopilot nav one hold. I've got that set to A. And just below that toggle autopilot heading hold, I've got set to B. And there's something I want to show you here. I'm going to come back to this one. This is more an advanced setting that I'll show you in a moment. But heading hold, while we're in there, let's just close the autopilot menu. Under instruments and systems. So if you don't have this set up, it's in instruments and systems. Click on that and flight instruments. I've got my increase heading bug to my rocker switch. So moving it right will increase it. To decrease it, I move my rocker switch left. When you're setting this up, if I click on that, I'll, I'll reset this up for you and click in here to search to set it up. So I'm clicking in this box to actually set it up, but then I'll have to click the button. If I click in there and move my rocker switch left, it will come back as plus. It doesn't make any distinction if you do it manually. Now, let me just validate that. So basically, if I go back into my, I'll apply and save that, go back to my aircraft, come down to my instrument views, if I move my rocker switch, nothing's going to happen because on the same button, it's confused it. Because I've manually tried to do this, I've confused the sim and it's thinking the same button does the same thing. So it's not moving. Let's just get my mouse to show you. Oh, I've got a very quick mouse attached to my Xbox. That heading bug there, it's not moving when I move my rocker switch, basically. Because I've confused the sim. To set this up properly bit complicated so take your time with this instruments and systems flight instruments to decrease the heading bug so I want to move my rocker switch left I'm gonna have to click in that and instead of going here into this box I'm gonna search by input and just scroll down I'm using my Xbox controller right analog stick to scroll down and I want to get to axis minus five sorry Ax joystick L axis 5 minus and that will be the correct one so I'll validate that apply and save and then go back to the sim now if I move my rocker switch you can see that heading bug that blue heading bug is moving left and right as it should do so I'm moving my rocker switch right to increase it moves it right Left will move the heading bug left. Isn't that fantastic? So there you go. I did talk about an advanced setting. Now what I've done here under autopilot, this setting, 
I've just put toggle autopilot approach hold on. I'm not going to go through how to set approach hold and set up your nav radio. I'm going to link a video down below. It's a recent back to basic video I did and I'll show you how to do this. But if I want to activate approach hold with buttons, I've got B5, I'll show you on screen, as a shifter. I don't have anything assigned to B5 by itself, so that's my shifter button. So effectively, I could set up B5 and Y together, and that will activate approach hold. If you want to use a shifter button, have nothing set up. In my case, it's for B5 by itself. I don't have anything set up natively for B5. So I can use that, hold down my B5 and press one of my other buttons to set up a different function in the aircraft. Take your time with that one. <laughs> so if you've got a function that you haven't set up yet, have a button set where you've got nothing else set for it, in my case B5. I can hold that down and press another button to activate approach hold in this case or something else. I do hope that makes sense. Listen, those are my autopilot settings and under instruments and systems and flight instruments, increase and decrease heading bug with my rocker switch. What we'll do now, get back in the aircraft and go for a quick flight test with these settings. Okay, so I'm back at London City Airport. I've got uh, live multiplayer on, so if any of my regulars are here, welcome. Get back in the cockpit. I'm just going to throttle up. Instead of showing you my whole task one on a separate camera, I'll just show you the buttons I'm pressing. Throttling up, and pressing the Y button to release my parking brake. And I'm just using the twist action on my flight stick, and the rudder behaves very nicely indeed with those settings I showed you towards the beginning. I'll tell you what, let's just break, 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 break. Because <laughs> what I want to do is just set an autopilot altitude. Break. That's better. That'll do for now. Just set a quick autopilot. Oh, it's a fast mouse. This thousand feet will do. Still not broke properly, have I? Never mind. Now we can throttle up. Because I will be activating my autopilot. Once I'm up in the air, do I have enough runway? Sure, I do. I'm in a Cessna. Nothing to worry about. So up in the air we go. There. Just using my B1 and B2 to increase, well, to trim up so I don't have to hold pressure on my back stick and um, just trimming out there all's fine I'll get into a slight climb and activate my autopilot so autopilot's activated it will climb to my 1000 feet assigned altitude I'll put it into I'll just fly away in fact let me just take autopilot off so I'll just press autopilot again just fly to the right to fly away from the course I've set up because I want to utilize the heading mode to show you that's all working fine. There we go, I just fly right a little bit. Decrease my trim a little bit. And in fact, decrease my throttle a little bit too. So just trimming up. Trim's not as good with buttons as it is with a trim wheel. But you do get used to it and it works nice with those two buttons. Okay, that will do. Activate autopilot. I'm going to put it into heading mode, so that's my B button. And it will fly to the right because as you see, my heading bug. Now, which one's my... I've got two mice next to me, one for my laptop and one for my Xbox. My heading bug is here, north by default. So I want to use my rocker switch to move my heading bug, as you can see, to the left there. So I'm just using my rocker switch to do that. And in fact, I want to fly some way towards the south. There we go, you can see that in more detail now. And that should do, man. It should get me back towards that magenta line. So that's all working well. I can press my A button 
And that will activate GPS. GPS won't go green until it gets near. Oops. Until it gets near to that magenta line. Once we get a bit nearer, you'll see GPS will go green as normal. I've reached the 1000 altitude I set up. So that's fine. And etc, etc. Let's just take it off autopilot. So that will work well once we get... Should we get near to that magenta line just to show you? Prove the concept of this. Heading mode will turn itself off automatically. So it's a nice handy thing to have heading bug set up on the whole task one. If you're not using a rocket switch, if you've got a pair of rudder pedals, it's quite a nice way to set up the heading bug. I'll just move it to the right slightly, why not? There we go, move it to the right. Well, GPS is kicked in now, so there you go. So it'll just follow my magenta line, my course I've set up now. Heading mode will turn itself off. Let's turn off autopilot, because I want to show you. As I'm banking now, this suits me. If that's not reactive enough, increase those sensitivities. So move it to the right, the sensitivity slider under sensitivities, if that's not reactive enough. Descending and climbing, that all feels fine to me. So that just suits me. I can put a little bit of trim in there with the twist action and that suits me as well. So that's all fine. So that's all working well. Well listen chaps, those are my settings. I won't activate approach mode because I have to mess around with my nav radios. Look at my video that I've linked down in the description. I do show you an approach mode and how to set that up. Let me know your thoughts on this video. I'll put it back into autopilot for the moment. Give it a thumbs up if, you've, if it's been helpful and you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more of these types of videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.